cult is in the dark, my religion is a question mark. Where do I start? And that has stuck with me for 30 years. And he helped me answer those questions because I realized that I did have, didn't, didn't need to be religion, it was more about spirituality and knowledge of self. And he, he took me in a place where I had a starting point. And then from there, I went from five, uh, studying 5% mathematics, you know, all the way to 120. I didn't really, you know, master it, but then it opened up the doors for me to study other things. Yeah, Rob was funky. Rob was, Rob was jazz. Rob was funk. Rob was street, ratchet, ghetto, Knock a nigga, bump a nigga, slam dance and rub your bitch ass at the same time. Stinking ass, blunt smoking, 40 tossing, fuck a nigga up all in one. Like Rod was just, Rod was the street. That was the street. And uh, all of the records that his mother had in the basement. And uh, we decided to, you know, go run to the store to get a beer. At that time, we was getting quarts of beer because it wasn't no 40 ounces. It wasn't made yet. And um, when we got back, my turntable was spinning. And I said, Griff, who, who's touching my turntable? And Griff said, nobody, man, nobody comes down here. And um, then we heard some noise. And it was just little dude. <laughs> we running up the steps and Griff chased him. We was gonna beat him up. And it was, it was Rod Kim, his little brother. Pop old Griffin. Man, we went to school together uh, from, I mean, he grew up in wine, I mean, we, in wine dance. Uh, always lived right up the street, one way or the other. <clears throat> he, uh, from my mother, you know, across uh, over in the north side of wine dance, he lived right up the street there. And then when he moved over in the south side, he lived right up the street from my grandmother. So it was always a hood thing. Plus, you know, the, the music, he was in the hood rapping. His kid Wiz, kid Wizzy. Rock him as growing up. Um, got with a few dudes that were neighbors with him. Uh, G. Stro, Stephen Pye, which is Snake, Ron Drew, um, himself. I might be leaving a couple of out. Um, they formed a crew called the Love Brothers. And um, I always, you know, they used to rock at the block parties and backyard parties back in the days. And Rod was, I gotta say, I know this sounds cliche and corny, but from the beginning, he was special. Everybody was like, yo, nigga, you sound like this nigga Rock Kim. I'm like, how? I, I never saw it, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, certain niggas was like, yo, this nigga trying to bite Rock Kim style, you know what I'm saying? So that shit, like, that shit got under my skin so bad. Like, on my second album, I switched my whole shit up. You know what I'm saying? Which I always say that was, that was the wrong shit to do. <laughs> I guess the top three rappers to me of all time would be, um, it's hard to say, I can't, it's really tough to say, but I'd have to say Rakim. When Rakim came on the scene, he was the epitome of street and knowledge itself. His lyrics and style of fashion was impeccable. His ability to make music had an influence that goes way beyond what any of us could have imagined. Take a young, talented black teenager from Wine Dance, Long Island, a mere 40 minutes from New York City. Who would have thought it was him alone that would turn hip hop upside down? This docu-series and the accounts in it are from personal stories, opinions, experiences with his fans, friends and people who respect the gun. Run DMC's LL Cool J where they had the hype, you know, energetic raps. Rakim was more laid back, slow flow, intricate lyrics. Some of the intricate, most intricate lyrics even to this day. Like Rakim was the first, to me, you know, my first, uh, first rapper I saw that really, um, he was just, he was never bothered about nothing. He was just cool as fuck at all times. It's the number one thing. What you are saying, the content you deliver is the number one thing. There's a lot of artists that I like who don't bring lyrics to the game, and that's fine too. Just me as a fan of music, I enjoy all types of shit. But as a lyricist, as an MC, 
as a real MC, as one of the quintessential best MCs from New York City, the city that invented this shit, lyrics are everything. They matter. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. What they did, I'm saying both of them, because they both really set the tone. So it was like, oh man, I, Cats is going back in. I gotta rewrite this. Nah, I gotta step it up. Mm, I'm scrapping this verse. That's what dudes was doing because of these cats. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, nowadays things aren't so lyrical, but the lyricists that are out there, you know, they may not be the biggest, but people hear them. So Rod's sitting there in the cut, like, just, just perusing everything, just like, this building up. And he like, yo, yo B, get that impeach the president ready. Get that impeach the president ready. It's like, all right, okay. So I get up there and, you know, Barry B just shoves the headphones in my chest, kind of like, and I'm like, whoa, 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 for real? Okay, now I'm hot now. I'm ready to cut it up on somebody, get ready to slice somebody up. So, 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 uh, uh, Rob, Rob was like on some, yo, when I, when I, yo, when I, yo, let's go. He jumps up on the table. On a small little table, and he goes. He says one of his fit, one of his intros. And then in the bass, come on, Super B, let's dog the pace. So yes, yes, y'all, boom! I throw that record in, and when he, all of a sudden, he did the seven MCs in a line, rhyme, and everybody was just stuck on stupid. It was just like, everybody was like, yo, who is this dude? Who is this dude that just come, came here in Uptown and shook everybody up? Not only he shook everybody up, he had everybody's girls. Look at him like, yo, who is this dude? He's kind of, ooh, my, ooh.